Praise the Lord, precious family in Christ. Genevieve, your sister here. Um, we're preaching here in Wilson's Point, Sydney. And uh, we're here to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus is Lord and Jesus is coming back very, very soon. And so as we're here in Wilson's Point for a few days, the Lord Jesus has led us to come and do ministry in this area. We bind every evil spirit in Jesus' name. We bind every unclean spirit in Jesus' name. How are you? Jesus loves you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, big difference from yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's the same one, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. There's power in the Word of God, eh? Hey? Glory to God. We just bind every unclean spirit. Lord, we take dominion and authority in Jesus' name. As you sent us here in this tunnel, we've been able to minister to homeless people living in this tunnel. We've been able to give out tracts. And even though it's raining, uh, it started raining as we're in the tunnel, the Lord has put it on our hearts. Stay in this tunnel and preach your message in this tunnel. We've got people walking in and out of the tunnel. Hallelujah. And it's a beautiful day. The rain is pouring. God's pouring out His blessings and His grace in abundance. Hallelujah. And so uh, nothing's going to stop us. Rain and hair will shine. We'll continue to preach the Word of God right up until the Lord Jesus comes back for His bride. Glory to God. For God so loved the whole world that He sent His one and only Son. For God so loved you and me so much that He had a plan to send His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to pay the penalty for your sins and for my sins. Friends, salvation is a free gift. Salvation is a free gift. Jesus bled and died for the sins of the world. Jesus bled and died for every single person on the face of this earth. And we want to encourage you today, as we're hearing this message, to make a decision for Jesus Christ. Who are you following? Who are you serving? Jesus is coming back very, very soon. And people are living their lives as if he can't come back tomorrow. They're scoffers and mockers, scoffing and mocking, rising up in anger, saying that the Lord cannot come back yet. Why are people so angry when we preach the message of the return of Jesus? Why is humanity so mad when we mention the coming of Jesus? I'll tell you why. Hallelujah. Because the demons controlling those very people do not want you to believe in the Word of God and that there is even any such thing as the coming of the Lord. The devil wants to numb you down to make you think that this world, this universe is going to go on forever and ever and ever and ever, no end in sight without the return of the Messiah. Well, I'm sorry to break the news to you, friends, but God's Word will never, ever return void. Every single thing that Jesus declared in His Word will come to pass, even in the last detail. The Word of God will be fulfilled. No one can stop the Word of God from being fulfilled. See, the Bible is not just a book. The Bible is the word of God, but it is also the word of prophecy. It is a book of prophecy. Many prophetic events written in the word of God that have already come to pass, are coming to pass, and are about to come to pass. Glory to God. The question is, are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Have you prepared your houses? Have you got your houses in order? Have you called upon the name of Jesus? Have you made Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior? Have you been delivered, healed, 
restored by Jesus? Have you come into relationship with your Savior Jesus who bled and died for your sins? What are you waiting for, friend? The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Do not hide in your hearts. Come to Jesus today. Call upon the name of Jesus today. Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart and is inviting you. Excuse me. Hello, how are you? I want to tell you that Jesus loves you, my friend. Glory to God. Yes, baby. Um, the Lord's just leading me to do this. Right. You gotta face it. No, no, no. Leave them there. It's okay. Leave them. Just face it on the camera. To the man. How are you? We want to tell you the good news. I know Jesus fucking loves you people, right? I don't know. Right. Right. And the first of the blood of Jesus washes away all of your sins. Hallelujah, friends. Your precious situation is being what you to know that you're loved by Jesus. Right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have you heard the wonderful message? Jesus loves you too. He died for your sins and he rose again. Do you know where you're headed when you take your last breath? Jesus doesn't want your religion. Without Jesus, we're on our way to hell, my friend. We're standing here for a reason because Jesus loves you. And Jesus wants you to know that he died for your sins. If you die tonight, where are you going? Jesus is God and Jesus is the Savior. And he died for your sins to set you free. Alright? So he's coming back soon. Alright? Even the demons believe and they even shake at the name of Jesus. The Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. You will confess that Jesus is Lord. I will confess that Jesus is Lord. Choose Him as your Savior or face Him as your judge. You don't believe now, but on judgment day you will believe. And you will cry in fear. The Bible says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That day will be such a fearful day for all that you and I 
a born again Christian. A born again Christian is someone who puts their faith in Jesus and Jesus alone. We don't follow religion. We don't follow organized religion because organized religion is man made. Jesus didn't die on the cross so we could follow the religion. In fact, Jesus is better than dying on the cross so that we will be forgiven of our sins. See, the precious blood of Jesus cleanses us of all of our sins. And Jesus died so that we can have a relationship with him. Have you ever heard of the Bible? I haven't heard stories about it. Right. And can I ask you, what's your opinion on salvation? Have you ever heard of Jesus? Truth, that you will know without a shadow of a doubt that I am the true living God. 
All you have to do is humble yourself and ask me. Ask me with a heart of a sincere heart. Jesus, show me who you are. Jesus, remove the veil from my eyes. Because like I said, if you ask, you shall receive. Reuben, the Lord wants to touch your heart right now. What the Lord is showing me, if by faith, if I could pray for you, Jesus is going to touch you in such a powerful way within your heart. And when you walk away from here today, you're going to know, oh my gosh, Jesus is real. I've experienced Jesus today. Hallelujah. <laughs> I have a question for you, um, which is, my question is, um, you believe in Jesus, uh, you believe in God, but why do you not believe that the Christian churches are not always fundamentally good, but why do you, why do you oppose them? Oh, no, 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 we don't oppose Christian churches, what we oppose is religion, because if you look at history, and if you look at current churches and I guess religion, organized religion, there's a lot of hypocrisy in a lot of the churches. You've got to understand that there's a lot of churches who hide behind God, okay? A lot of pastors who really like abuse, you know, there's people who've been abused in the church, there's people who've been ridiculed in the church, there's people who've been silenced in the church, okay? Um, many true Christians have had experiences in church where they feel isolated, they feel shut down, they don't feel the presence of God because a lot of these people that um, own these churches, sack to sack, a lot of them use manipulation and the spirit of control. They want to control you and tell you, do this, do that. This my first personal experience. Nine years ago, I was in a church and, um, and I had a couple of encounter with the Lord Jesus and the Lord Jesus told me, that it's my job who wants me to start preaching his word. To start going out onto the streets, reaching out to the homeless, the broken, the lost, the poor. And you read the Bible, this is what Jesus commanded us to do. Sadly, the church that I was in at the time, when they found out that I was doing ministry and helping people on the streets and sharing the good news of Jesus, they rose up against me. There was a religious controlling spirit that they said to me, we don't give you permission to go preach on the streets. If you want to start preaching on the streets, you then start ushering in churches. Now, the Bible says, do not obey man, but obey God. In God's word, Jesus said, go out into all the world and preach the good news. When he made that statement, he was speaking to every single child who believes in him. Sadly to say, there's a lot of people who sleep in church every Sunday, but they have no compassion and love for the lost. They don't even want to go and share their faith with people who are hurting and broken, drug addicts, alcoholics on the street. If you read the Bible, you can see that Jesus had compassion and love for the lost. Glory to God. Jesus had compassion and love for the lost. Jesus and his disciples, their ministry wasn't in the building. If you read the Bible, they were out on the streets, laying their hands on the sick, healing the crippled man, laying their hands on the blind, healing the blind man, opening the ears of the deaf. They were going on the highways and the byways, looking for the lost, the broken, the hurting, the poor. This is the true church. What they are doing is going out onto the streets. Because the people in the church are already saved. They're already hearing, they're already hearing the word. The sad thing is, what are they doing a lot about of these it? churches, you know what Jesus revealed to me? A lot of these churches won't even let Jesus in. Because, you know what? A lot of it is about money, money, money. Give us your money, you can come with the money. But they don't care about you as a person. So now, we don't oppose the church. I mean, there's a big difference. We don't oppose the church because there are some good spirit-filled, spirit-led churches that are actually truly doing the work of an evangelist, going out on the street, helping the homeless, feeding the poor. But then, you know, in the Sabbath, there's a majority of churches who are doing that. And they give a bad name to the true children of God. There's no, yeah, there's no, see, Jesus himself opposes, Jesus himself opposes those who, who do not obey him, who do not obey, you know, his will. And so, when the Lord pulls you out of the church, I mean, when that happened to me nine years ago, I could have said, because the Lord said, daughter, you're out, out, you're out of here, I will provide for you. You can't stay in this church. It was under my choice. Stay in the church. 
and don't preach the word of God, disobey God and just stay in the church, or obey God and preach on the streets and get out of this church. Thank you. Thank you for telling me about this. Um, that's definitely love to do now. Thank you. Um, You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Yeah, can I, I ask you, before you go, can we just pray for you? I just believe oh. God wants to touch your heart. You want nothing to do. Let me just pray for you, Thank for you. God to reveal himself to you. Just a general prayer, Lord. Just a general prayer. Um, Lord, we just thank you for this wonderful young man, Father God. I just love his humble heart that he came here asking questions, Father God, Lord Jesus. He has questions, Father God, and he is seeking the truth. And I thank you, Lord, that you said in your word that if we seek the truth, we shall find it and it shall set us free. Truth is a person and his name is Jesus. He just told me to tell you that. Truth is a person and his name is Jesus. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one can come to God the Father except through me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today Jesus is saying, I'm knocking, Reuben, your heart only has one handle on the inside. I'm a gentleman, I'll never force my way in. By faith, invite me in and I will show you who I am. So by faith, just do something for me. Say, dear Lord, open my eyes. Good. Open my eyes. No, no, no just, just repeat up to me. Yeah. Dear Lord, open my eyes. Reveal yourself to me. Yes. So, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, say so, so in your heart. Reveal, reveal my, uh, yourself to me. Show me who you are, Lord Jesus. I want to know you on a personal level. All right, now I want to encourage you. If you seek him with all of your heart, you will find him. I just want to share with you, when I was 27 years old, my story was that I was a non-believer in Jesus. Hallelujah. I didn't believe in Jesus. I have been through a lot of horrible things in my life. At 27 years old, I wanted to change my own life. I wanted to end my life. I was depressed. I was broken. I was lonely. I had no hope in the world. Something in my heart began to cry out to God. I began to say, God, if you're real, who are you? Whatever God you are, whatever religion, whatever God you are, if you're so good, if you're so real, reveal yourself to me. Save me. Save me from taking my life. If you reveal yourself to me and show me you are coming in my life, I will turn my life around and I will live for you. It was only a matter of a few days later that I had a powerful encounter that changed my life. Millions of people across the globe have had encounters like this. And in this encounter, I was wide awake. And Jesus appears to me in a white shining robe with a red sash, arms outstretched. I saw the holes in his hands and in his feet. And I instantly recognized this is my Savior, my Lord, my God, Jesus. And the Lord looked at me and said, My daughter, I love you. My daughter, I love you. My daughter, I love you. And he hugged me. And I began to cry like a little girl. I never cried like that. Alright? I cried and cried because Jesus, my Savior, was hugging me. It was a supernatural experience, and it might sound crazy, but it happened to me. I know that I know that I know what I experienced. Because from that moment, I hugged Jesus. And I said, I love you too, Jesus. And I realized that this is my Heavenly Father who died to set me free. And I was in an encounter that He heard my cry. He knew I wanted to end my life. And I said, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. If you should reveal yourself to me, I will shut my life and I will live for you. And He revealed Himself to me. And in that moment, I heard an angel's voice. It was like an echo in the distance. I recognized him as an angel. And the angel said, This is the God who created the heaven and the earth. The God who loves with everlasting love. The God who will never leave you or forsake you. Hallelujah. In that moment, I realized I met Jesus. I met Jesus. Reuben, you can have the same encounter. He loves you so much. Give it a hug, brother. Can I encourage you? Get a Bible, start reading from the book of John, and start to talk to Jesus every day. Ask Jesus to reveal himself to you. He's going to give you, when you show me, you're going to have a powerful encounter in your bedroom. He's telling me now. He wants you to get on your knees, get on your knees, and lift your hand and say, Jesus, please show me who you are. I want to know you. He showed me now. I'm just seeing a bright light in your bedroom and peace, and you're going to experience Jesus. Mark my words, Ruben, really, it's going to happen. He just told me to tell you this. He loves your heart. He loves your heart. Right? Seeking the Lord your heart, you'll find him, Ruben. Bless you, my brother. Bless you. You've been a delight.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Seek and you shall find. Ask and it shall be given to you. Knock and the door shall be opened. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is faithful. He is a faithful God that keeps his promises to thousands of generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is not a man that he will lie. Glory to God. He's given us his word. His word is truth. His word is alive. His word is living. His word is sharper than any double-edged sword. Hallelujah. Anyone watching this message, listen to this video. Listen to this video. I want to encourage you to begin to cry out to God. And to begin to ask Him, Lord, reveal yourself to me. I want to know you on a personal level. I want to know you. Any, any atheists that happen to be watching this video, we've ministered to atheists and we've prayed for atheists before. And one thing that atheists have in common, one thing that atheists have in common, as I ask them this question, I ask them, have you ever asked God if it's real? And they said, no. And I remember praying for one atheist man. In that moment, he allowed me to pray for him. And he invited Jesus into his heart. And on the spot, he's, he asked Jesus, if you're real, please reveal yourself to me. And the Lord told me to tell him, tell him I'm going to put my hand on his heart from the inside. He's going to feel my hand on his heart. This young man who burst out, broke down in tears. He said he believes in evolution. He's an atheist, doesn't believe in Jesus. In that moment, he asked Jesus to reveal himself to him. Jesus literally touches his heart and he feels the love and the presence of Jesus and the Holy Spirit and he starts crying. In that moment, that man was changed. See, Jesus has the power to instantly transform you. Glory to God. From non-believer to believer. From atheist to born-again Christian. We've seen too many, many stories. Too many stories that we will take forever for us to share. But I want to encourage you, if you seek Him with all of your heart, you will find Him. I seek Him and I found Him. Not only did I find Him, but He appeared to me. He has become more real to me. Jesus says, blessed are those who believe without seeing. So you don't have to see Him to believe. Believe by faith that He is who He says He is. He will show you who He is. He loves you so much, guys. And He is coming back so soon. And I want to encourage you, fall in love with Jesus. Cry out to Him. Ask Him to, to remove the veil of deception from your eyes. Ask Him to open your spiritual eyes. Ask Him to remove your blindness. Ask Him to open your spiritual ears. Hallelujah. Ask Him and you shall receive. Time is short, friends, time is short. Jesus loves you and we love you. And tomorrow we're gonna to step out again and do another video, another recording. And we just give God all the glory, the honor and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah.